Hey, my name is Connor and welcome to Crypto Empire, where I show you how to dominate in the crypto markets. Trend lines are a very powerful tool to identify high probability setups in the charts. In this video, we're going to be going over in detail how to properly draw your trend lines so that you can start trading with more precision and more accuracy and of course, make more gains. So let the gains be with you. So we're going to start out this video by taking a look at the Bitcoin price chart. Now, before we jump fully into it, I just want to let you know that trend lines are subjective in trading. There is no correct way to do things. There's a thousand ways to skin the cat as the saying goes. So how I draw my trend lines may differ from yourself or somebody that you know. So keep this in mind. However, I will say that the principle remains constant, right? We are looking to identify trends in the markets. So the first thing that you need to do to identify a trend is identify if the chart is printing higher highs and higher lows or lower highs and lower lows. So with Bitcoin, we are in the bull run year. It is a clear uptrend on the macro perspective. And as you can see, we are printing higher highs and higher lows, right? We pump up, create another swing high, and then we print a higher low. Again, we make a higher high, we break this all time high, and then we make a higher low again, right? These are clear uptrend signals. And then up here, we printed a higher high. However, we ended up creating a lower low. So we're gonna get into how that actually happened by drawing a trend line on the chart. So to draw this trend line, it's very common for a trader to look for a point at the chart such as this one. We had a pump up and then a pullback this in itself was a trend line break. And then we started to reform the uptrend. So a lot of people will go ahead and make this the start of the trend line and then connect that to the candle closes, right? We connect that to the candle body closes and we can see that we have a trend line that has three touch points. We have one touch point here. We have another touch point here. And then we have a third touch point here. And we try to look for trend lines that do have three touch points because that is confirmation of the trend. Now, personally, I would draw this trend line a little bit differently because we have been an uptrend for longer than January 27th, right? We've been moving higher since really last March when the flash crash happened with the Rona dump. So how I would draw this trend line is I would take it all the way down here to this candle low after we had this pullback. And then I would readjust the top of the trend line to make sure we're not cutting through too many candle bodies. So by doing this, we have some more data on the chart and some more trend line touches as well. And with trend lines, if you guys know me and you've been subscribed to the channel for a little bit, or you've been in the Telegram group and know my style of trading, I love trading supply and demand zones. And trend lines are no different. However, it's kind of diagonal supply and demand zones or diagonal zones of support and resistance. So now what I would do is I would go ahead and take this low and I would connect it to these candle closes like so. Now what this does is this creates kind of an upwards channel and this channel is acting like an area of both support and resistance in the chart. Because as we can see over here, the trend line was respected as an area of support. However, we did end up breaking down. Let me just zoom in so you guys can really see. We use the trend line as support and then we did end up breaking beneath it, right? And then we saw a pump up. We broke the trend line to the upside again. We regained it. And then we broke down again, but it was never supported. It was a fake out. It wasn't a confirmed breakout. And then we went ahead and resumed the direction of the trend. And as you can see, we had multiple touches of the trend line, right? Price was confirming the uptrend, multiple touches. And then we ended up breaking down up here once again. We broke beneath the upper trend line. And then we used this lower trend line down here as an area of support. So this is why it's good to put multiple trend lines on your chart and draw kind of a zone of the trend a zone of support and resistance vertically or slanted diagonally because as we can see the lower trend line was respected here we had this one explosive pump out and then we had the retest the retest is where you want to enter into the trade with trend lines me personally when i take a trend line break trade i always wait for the confirmation of the breakout because as you can see we have a lot of fake outs with trend lines it doesn't always follow through and break so for this specific example what i would do is i would put my entry in the middle of the zone, I would go ahead and put my stop loss beneath a recent low, such as this one right here. I would put my stop loss underneath these lows, and then I would put my profit target at some recent highs created. 
such as these highs over here. Now, this is just one strategy to trade trend lines. This is trading the breakout. You can also trade the bounce of the trend line, hopping in in the direction of the trend when we do have a pullback, such as a good example is right here, right? You would put your entry right at the trend line. I would put my stop loss beneath the lower trend line in an area on the chart such as this one, because we can see we have these candle tops over here. And this was actually from the Elon Musk pump. We have actually a bit of a gap here. If you guys have heard of things like the CME gap, I'll just briefly explain what the CME gap is. The CME gap is when we have a gap in price. So we can see that from here to here, there is no candle wicks. There's only this one explosive pump up. And this pump did happen the day that Elon Musk released the news that he put $1.5 billion of Bitcoin on Tesla's balance sheet. And this created the CME gap. This is pretty unrelated to trend lines, but I just want you guys to know what the terminology is. So when you do see that word pop up, you are in the informed crowd and you know what's going on. Anyway, back to the subject at hand trend lines. So yes, we had some more bounces of the trend line and then we ended up breaking down. We broke the upwards trend line. Finally, this was a very long trend line from about December. We finally ended up breaking down through it. However, now price is looking like it wants to make a go at reclaiming the direction of the uptrend. We have to trade this carefully because we can't be too aggressive with the choppy market conditions that Bitcoin is in right now. I do think that the bull market is going to continue with strength in the coming days to weeks. That we're going to be seeing some very explosive pumps. However, we have to remain cautious because there will be fake outs along the way. And we don't want to suffer a large loss from being too aggressive and trying to force a trade. No, we wait for the setups to yell at us to enter into a trade. So this is a daily price chart and trend lines work on all time frames. And now depending on which time frame you're on would determine the length that you are in a trade for. If we're looking at a daily price chart, that means we can stay in trades for longer periods of time. We can wait for them to play out. If we're going to drop it down to say a four hour, this means we would stay in the trade for a shorter amount of time. So as you can see, this one trend line is still on the chart. I'm just going to get rid of it for now. And now over here, we have a downtrend. How I know that is we are creating lower lows and lower highs over here, over here. These are lower highs and lower lows. Textbook downtrend and how we would go about drawing the trend line, we would connect these highs and draw this downwards. And now see over here how I'm not making it perfect where I'm connecting it exactly at the candle wick highs. This is why I said trend lines are subjective. Some people like to connect them only to the wick highs. I personally like combining connecting them to the candle body closes and the candle wick highs and lows. So for this example, we can see that I'm aligning them on the candle body closes and it's working out quite well. And perfectly, Bitcoin respected this downward slope trend line as an area of resistance on the price chart and also if we look to the left we can see that there is a lot going on it looks like we have a bit of a call this resistance you can call it a supply zone there's just a lot going on on the charts and it's going to take a bit for price to find the strength to push through this we need the bulls to step in with a lot of strength and burst through this trend line and if you wanted to go ahead and take a trade on this bitcoin trend line breakout what I recommend when I do trade trend lines and what I recommend to all the group members is to wait for the confirmation. With the confirmation, we wait for the breakout and then we wait for the pullback. This is called the retest. After we retest the trend line, then we usually push higher. So I always tend to wait for the confirmation because that minimizes my risk and minimizes my downside. And with trading, risk management is very important. So keep that in mind. Some people, if they're more aggressive, they would enter into a trade as soon as price starts to break out of the trend line, like something like this. They would put their entry here, price starts to pump up, they get their order filled. You can put your stop loss just beneath the trend line over here, I wouldn't put it underneath this low, and then I would ride it out to an area of supply on the chart. What do we see if we look up and to the left? We see we have a drop base drop zone. I'll make this red for you guys to identify it as a supply zone. And this would be used as your profit target. So if we were to take a long position, and we'll see what this comes out to in terms of his risk reward ratio, this is about a three to one. 3.6% to 9.5%, just about a three to one here. So this is what we look for. We look for three to one setups. This is looking pretty good, not financial advice. Of course, do your own charting. However, we need to wait for the confirmed breakout. And I usually do as well look for a volume supported confirmed breakout. Down here in the bottom of my chart, you can see we have volume bars. What I would look for is a big green volume candle that surpasses these uh, red selling volume candles over here. This is called the volume supported breakout. 
all of these confluences together would identify a very strong high probability trade in the markets. Now moving on, let's take a look at another price chart and identify some trend lines. Let's look at Binance Coin US dollar. Binance Coin has been going a bit sideways recently. However, we can see that we are forming a bit of a chart pattern over here. And how we would draw this chart pattern is by using trend lines, of course. So we can see we are kind of in a bit of a pennant over here, a bull pennant, I would call it. So first I would take a trend line and I would connect it to this candle extreme wick high and I would draw it across these candle body closes. Again, some people might only want to draw it across the highs, the extremes, which is fine. There's no wrong way to do it. However, I would go ahead and draw it like this to have some more touches on the chart. I would draw it along these candle body closes for the top downward sloping trend. And then for the upwards trend, I can look left and I can see that we have some stuff over here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this and then connect these to the bodies and some wicks as well. We have multiple touches, right? We have one touch, two touch, three touches. This is a higher high. This is actually a lower low. So this is pretty bearish, but this is the pennant chart pattern. Hence why I drew it like this. Anyway, we are printing higher lows, which is what we look for in an uptrend. So here we have three higher lows and three confirmed touches on the trend line. This is a confirmed uptrend at this point in time. And with BNB, I would be looking for a breakout to the upside personally. We are in a bull market. Things are starting to pick back up. Market is showing signs of strength. So for this specific chart pattern, it will have to break within a few days, you know, by the end of April, just by judging at the chart. So be looking out for a move, a trend line break to the upside with BNB. How we would go ahead and trade this trend line break is again, we would wait for price to first of all, break out of this pennant chart pattern, right? It's gonna go do its thing, consolidate for a little bit more. Then it's gonna pick a direction. Now it's not uncommon to see a fake out in the other direction before the big push higher. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw something where BNB went and tested these lows from over here before breaking out, retesting, and then pushing higher. So again, there's no right or wrong way to trade this. Personally, I will be waiting for the breakout of the upwards trend line, and I'll be looking to go long at the retest. So how that would look, I would put my entry after we do break out, I would put my entry right somewhere along here by the trend line. We're gonna have to wait to see how the candles form, of course, because this would determine exactly where to put your stop loss. But as an arbitrary example, you wanna put it underneath some candle lows like this, right? So if price goes against you and creates a lower low, you wanna get stopped out, minimize your downside, you're out of the trade and you're waiting for the next opportunity. Because trades are like you waiting at a train station. There's always gonna be another opportunity coming, knocking at your door, so you can't can't hold on to your losers. Cut your losers quickly, set yourself up for the next trade, and you will be a profitable trader and you can make life-changing money in the financial markets. Anyway, for your target, you would want to go ahead and you guys know me, I love trading fib extensions for profit targets. So I would take this swing high, take it down to the swing low, and we can see our first target is at $769. Next we have 850. After that, 981. Do I think BNB is going to hit these price targets? Absolutely. I'm not a financial advisor though, but BNB guys, it's pretty much like buying Amazon in 1997. We are so early with crypto. We should all be so grateful that we have the technology. We have the education to go ahead and profit from this bull market. Cause remember guys, there's a lot of people out there that want to learn crypto and they just have no idea and they end up not putting in the work themselves. So kudos to you for watching this video right now. If you're still with me, smash that like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel right now because you are educating yourself to position yourself to profit greatly if you haven't already made a life-changing amount of money in the markets. So let's continue making these gains. Let's keep on rising to the top. And for now, let's continue with the topic of the video, which is trend lines. So yeah, trend lines, you can use them to draw out chart patterns. This is a pennant, a bull pennant. We are waiting for the breakout, how I would do it again. You wanna wait for the confirm breakout on the retest and then go ahead and take your long position. Stop loss underneath a low. Use your FIB extension to find your profit target. Moving on, let's take a look at Luna. Luna had a nice pump today. So this we can use as a trend line break because it did break out of a downtrend. I'm just gonna clean the chart up a little bit for you guys get rid of this. So this is a supply zone at the top over here. And I will take the trend line by drawing it from this top. And I will draw it down like so. So as you can see here, we had a very big sell off. And then we regained a little bit and we consolidated. And I remember when this happened, I was expecting a move to the upside. However, the market needed to cool off. Luna had one of the most epic pumps we've ever seen before went from like less than a dollar to 22 
dollars and 40 cents up here very happy with this coin a lot of strong fundamentals going for it now as you can see we did have the trend line break right we broke out and then we pulled back but we didn't touch the trend line on the pullback so what do we do again that is why i gave you that example of drawing trend line zones in the beginning of the video because if we were exact and precise with this trend line and we ended up connecting the candle wick highs like so we can see that this retest actually would would have worked out perfectly for an entry into the trade right as you can see right here we broke out then we retested this upwards trend line right here this is your entry buy the retest put your stop loss i would have put it here underneath these candle body lows in case we did end up having a bigger move to the downside you would have been stopped out minimize your downside and then as you can see we're, we are now printing higher highs and higher lows so that would have been your entry for luna congratulations if you guys did take this trade on your own and this is a textbook example of a breakout retest and then a continuation with the move upwards. Always be patient and always do look for that retest when you are looking to trade trend lines. Let's take a look at another example before we wrap this video up. Let's take a look at the one inch USDT price chart. So one inch, if you guys aren't too familiar with it, I will let you know it is a very volatile asset to trade. The price whips around like, like a bucking Bronco, right? Like the one inch avatar is pretty accurate. It is fierce in the price charts. It, it doesn't care, right? It just whips around so many stop loss hunts. The market makers are relentless with this one. To start, I see a downward sloping trend line, something like this, right? We have one touch. We did print a little bit of a higher high over here or not really, it is a lower high, but we can see we had one touch, two touch, three touches. This is a confirmed downward trend. And as you can see, I also do have this gray line as horizontal resistance, and I would call this chart pattern a descending triangle. Now this is typically bearish. However, we can see that we are pumping higher, so we're continuing in the overall direction of the upwards trend. Anyway, with this specific trend line break, again, we can see that the trend line was acting as horizontal resistance, right? We had several touches here, here here this would be the other strategy for trading trend lines you go short when price reaches the trend line you put your stop loss just above a recent high so your stop loss would have been something like here and then you would have taken your profit at a level of support on the chart such as right here i'll draw that a little bit better something like this right that is the other strategy if you don't want to trade the breakouts you can just trade the bounces of the trend lines both work perfectly this depends on you as the trader what is your trading plan what is your trading style how do you want to do things you need to figure this out on your own nobody is going to do it for you okay so keep that in mind develop your trading plan, write it down and stick to it no matter what. And that is how you will have success as a trader in the market. But as you can see here, we broke out of the trend line. We went ahead and retested the trend line. This would have been your entry. I always look to buy the pullback, the retest. We can also use the Fibonacci and see that that would have went to a Fibonacci level, but we're going to stick to trend lines in this video. So this would have been your entry, right? You buy the pullback and then we can see we had a pretty nice move upwards. And now we can see that the trend line was acting as support on the chart. We did end up breaking beneath it. And this is really just how you use trend lines. You use them as a general guide. There is no end all be all with trend lines. They are just there to help you make higher probability decisions, identify higher probability setups when you are in the price chart. There's no right or wrong way to draw trend lines. So it's up to you to go ahead and practice Feel things out for yourself, see which kind of trading style that you want to trade, and then develop that into a foolproof strategy for yourself to take high probability trades all day long in the markets. Again, this works on any time frame. You could be looking at 15 minute charts, right? We'll go down to a 15 minute just to give you an example. You can do it on four hour charts, you can do it on dailies completely up to you if you want to be a scalper you can use it if you want to be a swing trader you can use trend lines the like last example we'll take a look at ada cardano on the 15 minute price chart so here we can see a very nice v-shaped recovery we had a strong sell-off and then we made a beautiful v right recovered right back up that is a very bullish uh, reversal signal now for cardano i'm glad that i pulled this example up because i'm going to show you guys something Trend lines are arbitrary lines, right? They're, they don't need to be exact. So for this, I'm gonna go ahead and take this swing low example, and I'm gonna connect it to these candle closes. And as we can see over here, this trend line from over here works perfectly. It aligns perfectly with this upward sloping trend line. And we have four touches at this point in time on this trend line. So we slash right through these candles over here, which some people may think is completely wrong and you're not allowed to do that. No, that doesn't make sense. 
But like I said in the beginning of this video, trend lines are subjective. In my book, this is perfectly fine to do because we can see that it is working perfectly and identifying the trend. We're printing higher highs and higher lows here, which is beautiful. And as you can see, we're kind of consolidating. We made a lower high over here. So this I would call an area of horizontal resistance. So we'll look back and see how this one plays out. But again, guys, there's no right or wrong way to draw these trend lines. You can connect them to other parts on the chart and slash right through price if you do want to do them that way. I'll do it a lot of the time when I see that it makes sense. I'll just pick a swing low, connect it to the candle body closes, and if it works, that means that that would act as an area of support or resistance on the chart. And again, we're just using these trend lines as a guide. So to summarize this video, there's no right or wrong way to go ahead and draw your trend lines on price charts. Now, myself, personally speaking, I use trend lines as a guide and I look for multiple confluences to enter into a trade, such as supply and demand zones and Fibonacci levels. These indicators do tend to coincide a lot of the time. And when I see these multiple confluences, this is yelling at me that it is a very high probability trade and I should go ahead and put an order in with a stop loss and a profit target set before I enter into the markets. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section down below. Again, subscribe to the channel if you are not already subscribed. And my name is Connor from Crypto Empire and we will see you in the next video.